Thermochemistry 4. Today we're going to talk about how to use that energy value that you see associated with reactions. You'll see a reaction, and then in the end you see a delta H value and either a negative or a positive sign and a number with kilojoules next to it. We're going to determine and get some practice to figure out how to use that energy value and what does it tell us. So we're going to have uh, the example of the problem. Well, let's go back to the, the initial slide here. I don't know if you guys notice this background. Anybody want to guess what this background is? This is actually rust. <laughs> so if you take iron and it's exposed to, to air, it's called oxidation. When iron is oxidized, it rusts. This is the reaction we're going to look at. The, re the reaction of iron. The reaction of iron with oxygen to give us iron 3 oxide. So a couple questions we're going to ask, ask about energy, the temperature, how much energy you release if we're given a certain amount of moles or a certain amount of grams. So we're going to try and answer six different questions with this. So let's start with the first couple. So we've got this reaction of iron and oxygen and iron oxide as a product. Now we see that from this reaction that it's got a negative delta H, so that means it's exothermic, but this tells us something about the reaction. Per four moles of iron, three moles of oxygen, and two moles of iron three oxide that are produced, we get 1,652 kilojoules. So, but we don't always react exactly four moles of iron, three moles of oxygen, and produce two moles of iron, three oxide. So if we have other amounts, how much, how much of energy is produced? So the first question is energy released or absorbed. Hopefully you can answer that quickly and easily. The negative sign here indicates if energy is released or absorbed. The negative sign tells us that it is exothermic. Anytime ex, uh, Anytime you have a negative sign, it's exothermic, energy is released. So that's released right there. The next one, so the negative sign tells us that it's an exothermic reaction and thus energy is released. The next question, would the temperature of the system increase or decrease? So what this means is if it's exothermic, energy is given off to the surroundings. So that energy goes into the surroundings and it makes those particles move faster. And when particles move faster, their energy is their temperature is increased. So the exothermic accompanies an increase in energy and thus the temperature should also increase. So there's a couple things about temperature and energy. Now let's do a couple of problems with this using moles, first moles and we'll switch to grams. So the next one. Question uh, C, how much heat is released when four moles of iron reacts with excess oxygen? Well, this we can actually simply see from the balanced equation. We see this is four moles here. If we have exactly four moles, which I'm not sure if you remember what four moles would be, the mass of iron is 55.85. So if we take 55.85 and multiply by four, that mean, means we actually have 223.4 grams of iron. If you oxidize that much iron, you're going to have exactly 1652 kilojoules of energy. Now, how would you set that up? If you want to set up, a, you could set up a factor label will look like this. You would say four moles, and then the important ratio they're going to be using over and over again is a ratio of energy to moles from the reaction. We see this amount of energy to the moles in the reaction. Now, I included the negative sign, probably shouldn't have, because it's asking for an amount, and you can't have a negative amount. Negative, negative, the negative sign is important for us to see that it's exothermic, so it's important whenever you have a delta H, you indicate it correctly if it's negative or positive. But when they ask for amount, we really want to put a positive sign for that. So when we do this, we see the four moles of iron cancels, the four cancels, we end up with 1,652 kilojoules. Okay, let's do D. In D, we're asking how much heat is released by two moles of iron with excess oxygen. I think you already know this, that we're using, instead of 50, uh, two moles, uh, we're, instead of four moles, we're using two, so the number should be in half. Well, how, do you, how does this actually work as far as setting it up? You would start with two moles instead of four, and you would say two moles of iron, and then you would put the, the same ratio you have here, but your moles of iron cancels. And, but, you know, the 2 goes in the 4 twice, and so you're going to be dividing 1,652 by 2, so you have 826 kilojoules. Let's go to the next slide. How much heat is released when, how much heat is released when 1 gram of iron is reacted with excess oxygen? Now, for this one, we're going to start with 1 gram of iron, but we have to do a step first. We have to change grams of iron to moles. 
So what we do is we get the molar mass of iron from the periodic table, which is 55.85, and that allows us to cancel grams of iron. Now we have grams of iron in moles. You see this is a much smaller number. And we know one mole of iron, want that to cancel, and once again we're using the same ratio, the ratio of four moles of iron to the amount of energy we get from the balanced equation. And so to get this answer in your, in your calculator, it's a 1 divided by 55.85 times 1,652 divided by 4. And that gives us the answer of 7.39 kilojoules. Let's do one more problem. Now this one, instead of just giving you iron and excess oxygen, this time I'm going to give you iron and oxygen and ask you to figure out the amount of energy. So for this one, we're going to have 10 grams of the next problem, which is F. We're going to have 10 grams of iron, 10 grams of oxygen, and then I'm going to ask you to figure out the amount of energy. Now what's different about this is sort of, this is actually what we call a limiting reactant problem. Now the first step will be basically like this one, but instead of one mole or one gram, we're going to have 10 grams, and that means we're going to basically move the decimal here. But how would you set up the oxygen? Let's look at this. Now the next setup would be just like this. You have 10 grams of iron, 10 grams of oxygen, and this is basically the same as the setup we just saw, but we're moving the decimal. We have 10 grams of iron, grams of iron cancel, moles of iron cancel, and you see that, so to get this answer, you say 10 divided by 55.85 times 1,652 divided by 4. This gives us 73.9 kilojoules. Now you need to do the exact same thing with the oxygen. So we take the 10 grams of oxygen, and we know on the periodic table oxygen is, is 16, but this is one of those instances where oxygen is by itself. So it's what we call diatomic. So we're going to use the 32 instead of the 16. And we know there's 16 grams of oxygen, one mole of oxygen, that, that gets rid of grams of oxygen. Now, but we want to get moles of oxygen to energy. Now, once again, we're going to use the ratio of energy to moles from the balanced equation. We've got 1652 kilojoules. But this time, instead of using 4, we're going to use 3 because the balanced equation tells us 3 moles of oxygen produces 1,652 kilojoules of energy there. So we cross out moles of oxygen, and now we're just left with kilojoules. So to do this answer, we'd say 10 divided by 32 times 1,652 divided by 3. And this gives us 172. Now the question is, which one of these is the correct answer? Now, if you look at this correctly, it's the same as a limiting reactant problem. That means only one of these is produced. The amount, hopefully you remember, the amount that's produced is 73.9 kilojoules. That is the amount of energy produced. That means that iron, even in this problem, just like the others, is still what you call limiting. So that's limiting, and the oxygen here is what we call excess. So we got limiting and excess. Um, so the amount of energy is produced is 73.9. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions.